Welcome to the Fitness Industry Success Show. Ideas, inspiration, and interviews to take your fitness business to the next level. Next level. With over 23 years of fitness industry experience and the founder of Lead Lion, an innovative fitness marketing agency, here's your host, Nick Parker. Welcome everybody to another episode of the Fitness Industry Success Show. I am elated to have a guest with me today who is probably somebody you already know, but if you don't, by the end of the show, you will know her very well. We're welcoming the new president and CEO of Ursha, Liz Clark. So Liz, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great, Nick. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to do this today. Yeah, me too. It's such yeah. a pleasure. Um, let me let me kind of formally introduce you real quick. For those of you that um, haven't been tracking uh, all the latest news with Ursha, Liz is our newest president. She's our newest CEO and she really hit the ground running. She's done a lot in just 30 days and we're so thankful for that. Um, she was formerly with the National Confection, uh, I don't even know how to say this word, Confectioners Association, right? And uh, she's been a long time uh, in, uh, expert in association management and also with a focus on advocacy. So this is a first for us in Ursha, and I think a much needed position and we're excited that you are with us and that you're here. So welcome to the show. Before we dive into all this stuff, we're gonna talk about your personal journey a little bit. We're gonna talk about Ursha, the Gyms Act, the future of the fitness industry, the future of Ursha, really important stuff. But I wanna lighten it up a little bit. Can we play a game? I love games. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna play a game called Two Truths and One Lie. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our audience guess which one is the lie. So you have to come up with three things in no particular order, and we'll see if I can guess and then later our audience can guess. Okay. All right. So should uh, I do that right now? Yeah, go for it. No particular order. No see particular if you can throw order. me a curveball. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's see. One truth is that I am an avid hunter and enjoy big game hunting. Okay. One truth is that I am a natural blonde. And one truth is that I love coffee. Oh boy. Okay. You all decide what's the lie. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take a stab at this and I'm going to say that the lie is that you love coffee. And when do I reveal? You can tell me now because I'm dying. The anticipation okay. is killing me. I don't know if you're a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Nick. You're right. I actually do not care for coffee. In fact, I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. So. No kidding. Correct. No yeah. way. So yeah. that yeah. that was really good. So you like to hunt? You're a natural hunter? I do. I grew up in Montana. And so my okay. brother is out there. So I have some roots out there. And actually, I don't get out as much as I'd like to, but was out last year and I uh, killed a sort of a record-breaking monster bull elk. And oh, uh, wow. so it's been a really fun thing. Yeah. To talk about for the, for the since last I love it. Season. Yeah. I love a lady that knows her way around the gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You're my new best friend. Okay. okay great. <laughs> well, good. Well, I would like to um, dive into your personal journey just a little bit and kind of backtrack to when you were with the uh, Chamber of Commerce all the way up to uh, where you're at today. So talk me a little bit through your journey and how you ended up where you're at today. Yeah, you bet. So I have been in the association business since I graduated college. My undergrad was actually in sports broadcasting, but mm -hmm. ended up in the association world and started out actually in the chemical industry even before the chamber. But while I was there, I went and got my international a master's degree in international commerce and policy, which then made me essentially an expert in trade policy. So I went to the U.S. Chamber as a trade policy expert and spent a lot of time out on the streets and in all 50 states talking about trade policy, trade agreements, opportunity for new business with new countries. Really exciting time there. I had the opportunity wow. while I was there to engage quite a bit with Congress. I testified mm -hmm. a, a few times to the House and the Senate, as well mm. as um, some agencies, which is a pretty stressful experience. And I think <laughs> I was doing that at age 28. So wow, that's so incredible. to be able to have that that background from the U.S. Chamber has really carried me carried me far throughout Washington, and then wow. ultimately launched me over to the Candy Association, where I had spent the last decade advocating wow. on behalf of candy makers and suppliers. And now here I am 
uh, you know, month, month into to gyms and it's been awesome. I'm telling you, how, how did, how that transition happened? Were you sought out and, uh, did they, we head hunted, we picked you off, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I got to tell you, uh, being the, the head government affairs representative for the candy industry was not a bad gig. So yeah. when I left that, it was a pretty long line of, of folks that wanted that, but this was such an amazing opportunity to lead an organization that's ready for change and that needs change and coming from an organization that did that. I bring the expertise to, to do that. So it was important to our leadership and the board to make sure they had the right person to do that. So they, of course, contracted a headhunter, a very highly esteemed headhunter, one of the best in the world, Spencer Stewart. And it was a, I believe, a five or six month process yep. and probably a minimum of eight interviews for me with a variety wow. of different wow. audiences. And those that were maybe in the, in the URSA tent, those were outside of the URSA tent, those we want in that type mm -hmm. of thing. And, and was a, a really great long experience, but, but I think those were the steps that were necessary to mm -hmm. get the, the right person. It's hard to find the right person. And, and I believe we, we both, we both have found the, the right, uh, the right landing spot here. A happy right? marriage. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's great. I love it. And I think you're right. And URSA has, uh, at least in my eyes from a, uh, you know, I'm a member and I'm a part, but from a distance, at least it seems like it's really morphed a lot recently and really grown up. And so for those of that are listening to the show today that don't really aren't too familiar with Ursha or the Ursha of new, can you explain who Ursha is and what you guys do? Yeah, right. So the, the international health racket sport club association, which by mm -hmm. the way, is a mouthful to say, happy yeah. to talk about that in a minute, <laughs> but, um, you know, we represent the international and domestic members across the country and, and across the world clubs, uh, the big brands, small brands, suppliers, and we do a handful of things. We, we have some trade shows that are fantastic where we bring together folks for networking and education sessions, we have really great publications like our magazine and other resources online and have been very effective actually in advocacy on the state level. But when the pandemic hit and gyms and fitness centers in our industry was not deemed essential, it became very clear that yeah. URSA needed to change a little bit of what it was focusing on and advocacy was that. So while we had focused on advocacy in the past, it wasn't as deliberate as it is today and as it will be in the future with mm -hmm. getting our brand in front of lawmakers, making sure our industry is known in front of policymakers. All of that is a very deliberate shift that has been led through a tremendous board and a tremendous board behind the board of people that yep. you know are maybe former board members or future mm -hmm. board members and, right. and a lot of great insight there. So those I think are the three buckets that we do um, and that we do really well and we're gonna continue to do even better in the future. Yeah, that's fantastic. So how has your first 30 days been so far? A <laughs> <laughs> uh, walk in the park. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah I'm getting a lot of rest. No, it's been, <laughs> listen, it's been a sprint in all honesty, it's been a sprint, yeah. but I was ready for that. And I, right now I'm in a, a listening and learning mode that I want to be a sponge. I want to hear from everybody. I want to know the good, the bad, the ugly about yep. this industry, about this organization, what we're doing good, what we can be doing better. And so because of that, I am covering as much ground as I can. And now in, in a Zoom world, you can cover a lot more. So right. I've got a really packed schedule. I can say I've got a really great assistant that's helping making all that happen. And yes. then, you know, as, as so many of us you, you if, that are in, find themselves in meetings all day that, you know, then it's time to get to work once you're done with your meetings at night. So I, right. you yeah. know, a family and a puppy <laughs> and things I got to balance for, I check out for a little while to do that. And then I'm, yeah. I'm plugging back in all night and, uh, you know, I've got a lot mm -hmm. of energy and I'm inspired by all the stories and the people that, that mm -hmm. make it exciting and all the opportunity that, that's out there. Yeah. And I love your energy. I mean, I, I don't know where I read this, but you're the self-described energy, energy bunny or energizer bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't that. even know who I said that to. I'm talking to so many people, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so now we have an idea of what Ursha is and, and kind of what's going on there. There's a huge part of it now that is all about adv advocacy and, and really uh, storming the gates here to try to get some change happening for the industry at large to help get relief for the industry. Um, what's going on there and then specifically uh in relationship to where the gyms act is at and what we need and kind of what's going on there yeah so thanks nick for that 
Listen, anytime that you are trying to have a policy agenda or move something along, you need friends in Congress mm -hmm. to make it happen. And you can't make a friend overnight. And unfortunately, that is one of the things that our industry learned in the beginning of the pandemic when everybody was being deemed essential, non-essential, what can be open, what can't be open. And we collectively did not have the voice to have those conversations with the right people at the right time. So mm -hmm. as a result, we, of course, you know, pulled our bootstraps up and we got to work and a lot of folks, you know, reached out and have made really phenomenal strides on Capitol Hill, including Ursa at the helm leading the Jim's Act. Mm -hmm. So what's been really exciting is over the past 15 months where we've got the Jim's Act to is really impressive. We have 155 sponsors on the House side and over 20 on the Senate side. So essentially a third of Congress. And generally, when you've got numbers like that, you can get things done. You can wow. be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the groundwork has been done by so many members, so many folks throughout the, the past 15 months to get their members of Congress engaged, realizing that gyms are the only thing that have not received any relief. Now, not only is that devastating that to date we haven't received relief, but things like casinos, restaurants, bars, maybe industries that aren't bringing mm. health to the industry, you could right. argue. So, so that is an important part of the narrative that we mm. are also bringing to the conversation, yeah. which has been really enlightening. And that's a, a, a direction where I want us to continue to go is to talk about all the services that we are providing to everybody in this world are making this country and this world healthier. We, right. are, we are saving the healthcare system by making people healthier. And this is a story we haven't told. And I believe the, the more that we are telling that in a unified perspective with medical professionals, with the insurance industry, it, it, on top of the legitimacy of our own industry and the, the, what we're creating, when you bring all of that together, Mm. It'll be it'll be a story that you can't deny. So we're having wow. that conversation as we as we are going on right now with with Congress and, and who's in and who's out. So the Jim's Act is a piece of legislation. And it's always hard, even with with the, the sponsors that we had to get an individual piece of legislation passed. It just generally that isn't necessarily the way Washington works. Unfortunately, you get lumped in with big buckets of other pieces of legislation because, and for good, for bad. And right. so right now we are in that fight and we are having calls and meetings on this, quite frankly, uh, hourly. What's wow. going on with the infrastructure package? What's going on with reconciliation? What is going on with the debt ceiling? What is going on with the continuing resolution? And where do we fit into all that? So it's about where do we fit into all that is where are our allies and where are our people in Congress that are fighting for their priorities? So I've said this before, policymaking, I mean, people know that it's, it's like making sausage. It's not pretty. You, know, you just really want to see it when it's at the end. And we are, we are in the middle of the sausage making process right now. <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. I know there's, there's, it's, it's been volatile. There's a lot of emotions, especially for like health club owners that are out there in the trenches, rolling up their sleeves. You know, some clubs are doing just fine. Some clubs are having record months and some clubs are, uh, downward spiraling, you know, a death spiral and they're, they're in desperate need of relief. So what, um, while we're talking about the Jim Zach, what advice or hope would you give to them regarding, you know, the future of our industry and, and the act itself? Right. Well, listen, a part of the other part of this narrative on top of Jim's is we know so many of our companies out there have relied on the employee retention credit ERCs. So we are mm -hmm. fighting with coalitions here in Washington to make sure that that ERC is continued into the next quarter, which if as of right now, it's not. So we're bringing a diverse group of voices together to, to make that argument and hopefully getting wrapped into some end of the year tax package to, to fix the ERC. The other piece is on idle loans, which are a low interest 30 year loan that many of our members have taken advantage and to ensure that those term limits apply to our members. And we've gotten that across the finish line in a really great way. So mm -hmm. look to the idle loans. If, if for those that are needing the relief right now, that's that yep. was one maybe one piece of relief I would say. But we're regardless, you know how how all this sausage ends up looking at the end. We're going to continue to fight. It's the whole reason we're changing the the whole pivot of this organization. And so, one of the arguments we're making right now is to your point. Yes, some companies are doing great, having record breaking, you know, years. And we mm -hmm. celebrate that. Right. Now we have to be careful with that narrative with our audience. But on the other hand, we're talking about the devastation that's been felt. And, right. and as usual, you know, members in, in 
Washington might not really know how it works on a day-to-day -day basis. And so to make sure that they understand so many clubs have back payroll that they need to pay, back rent that they need to pay. Because one of the questions that we're hearing is, well, gosh, we're coming out of the pandemic now and we've come this far. So why is anybody going to be out of business at this stage? And that's for those reasons that we, we right. have predictions that, well, we know that 22% of clubs and operators have gone out of business. We know that we've lost one and a half million jobs in our mm. industry, mm. but it could be as close as 25% by the end of December for exactly that reason on, mm. on all of the, the backs that we that we owe. So we're gonna continue to fight. We're gonna pound um, you know, the pavement every day. It's part of why the National Health and Fitness Alliance was in town last week. I'm happy to talk a little bit more about that if you want. New, yeah. uh, it's, it's URSA's advocacy arm. We had some great conversations about the future and, and what are the other areas where we can focus. Obviously, continuing to put the pedal to the metal on gyms, but things like tax credits for, for gym memberships and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of things of the like. The, the really, the, the sky is, <laughs> there goes my puppy, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but the sky, the sky really is the limit for areas that we can be touching on and working with the broader business community on other areas where that might not even be gym specific, but they're business right. specific. You know, what are things around payroll that matter, around um, yep. minimum wage? There's so many areas. And so we're going to be relying on our members to help mm -hmm. give direction on what are going to be the priority issues moving forward. Yeah, I love it. Can you talk a little bit about the advocacy part of it, the arm that you were just speaking about and tell us a little bit more about that? Right. So the National Health and Fitness Alliance, NHFA, is the advocacy arm of URSA that pulled together throughout the recent months when we really were lacking organizationally for advocacy. And so these are the folks that have been at the forefront on policy advocacy, organizing, pushing the GYMS Act across the finish line or you know, getting it to where we're at. So I thought it was important in my thir first 30 days to bring this NHFA into Washington, DC. Many of these folks have never met in person together. So it was a great opportunity mm -hmm. for these people that have been fighting and advocating mm -hmm for mm -hmm. so many months to be able to, to spend some time together, to share a meal together. And which yeah, really I saw is like that a, picture. There's some great minds on that table. <laughs> isn't it? I know. Yeah. It, was, it was a phenomenal dinner, I'll tell you. And Yeah, it looked we, like it. Yeah. And so it was a great opportunity. Then the next day, we just spent an entire day strategizing around the future of so much. What is going on around state alliances and what are all of our states doing and how can we be working harmoniously together on the state side? What, what are other business organizations doing? What is the realm of possibility on, on other policy you know, arenas for us to think about? And then what is the future of the NHFA and, and URSA together? We, you know, we, are, we are one, so we, are, we had a great sort of landing spot where we're gonna continue to push, we're gonna continue to, to leverage all of these great minds under under the ursa umbrella and just take right things on. to the next level it was really phenomenal phenomenal time spent in my opinion yeah that's that's great i know and i saw the picture and i knew a lot of the guys there and i was like man that's a really good group right there so i would love to to be a part of that one day um yeah so let's talk about um you know some of your your key initiatives right now and the future of ursha and like looking out forecasting maybe six months a year from now um, what some of the primary goals or vision would be for the organization and then more importantly, the fitness industry at large. Yeah. So one thing that I have said uh, far and wide is that organizationally, we need a new brand, the, the, the name <laughs> Ursa and, yeah. and, and to no offense to the founders of the organization, mm -hmm. but the industry, when we were found 40 years ago, is just not the industry where we are today. So I, I think we need to have a name that reflects that and reflects maybe not even where we are today, but where we want to go in the future. So what is the broadest thing that we can look at that be the home for all of these initiatives that we're talking about? You know, I talked about earlier about uh, mental health and what that, that means and, and part of the narrative that we need to be talking about just health. And so should mm -hmm. that be a word that's in our in our name, you know, fitness, of course, we're all, we're all doing fitness in some way, you mm -hmm. know, what does that mean? So I don't pretend to be a brand manager. This is going to be a collaborative <laughs> effort, but right. I plan on leveraging all the thought leaders that are in this industry to think about what it is that, that would be our name that's reflective of all those things, technology mm -hmm. companies that we want to partner with. Uh, right. th there's so much. So I'm really excited about that. And then I think because we don't have an identity with policy and lawmakers that is 
50 years old, like some of these other organizations, we have a real opportunity to sort of announce ourselves and launch ourselves and put ourselves on the map with, with that audience, as well as others around the world. You right. know, where do studios go? And we welcome all studios to be members of us, but in that name, it's more exclusive than inclusive. So I've talked right. a lot about that, that, that that is going to be a priority. And my hope would be that we could be rolling that out toward the first of the year. Okay, cool. Uh, another initiative is we're looking at uh, how do we ensure that we have a diverse board and, and what does that mean for the, the future of our industry? You know, diversity, equity, and inclusion is a high priority for, for me and for so many members of this board. So what does that look like to make sure that that's an area where we continue to go in the future? Mm -hmm. And, you know, making sure that we're doing all the right things with our meetings and events and with our publications. They've all been great and they are all really valuable tools to so many folks. So we just want to make sure that those are the, those are meeting the mark as well. Yeah, I love it. I, I think you've casted a really amazing vision. Um, and I love the idea of the rebrand because it's like I said, Ursh has gone through a more metamorphosis, maybe in the last year or so, but more so in the last six months, it seems like. And then you've just you're accelerating that. And I love it. <laughs> it's going to be great. So. I'm looking forward to it. So let's talk about uh, the fitness industry and what your thoughts are. You, you know, here's why. And I'm talking to the audience right now. Um, Liz has been around now for a little while, but she like she's 12 hour days. She's talking to everybody in the industry. She's constantly with every different level of people throughout the industry, whether it's vendors or club owners or large national brands or independents. And she's hearing a lot of feedback and she's starting to get her pulse. So what is your uh, now that you're slowly getting your, your fingers on the pulse of the industry, what does that look like right now, the morale, and then moving forward, what are your thoughts uh, moving forward in the industry at large? Yeah, so listen, the good news is I think the morale is high, and, and I hope that I'm bringing high morale. And, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I keep telling the, everyone my favorite TV show right now is Ted Lasso, because I just think he gives me faith in humanity, faith in the hope and, and optimism. Right. So I'm, I'm, my hope is that I, that, that I can be that face and that voice for that. So it's why I want to talk to so many people and what that means and share my vision. Because I also think that we need to be more unified. And so there are a lot of other associations out there in this space doing a lot of wonderful things with maybe sort of single track initiatives around certification, around mental health, around diversity. And so I'm having all those conversations to think through where is it that we can partner and leverage all of this together and, and come mm -hmm. under the umbrella. I'm yep. talking to a lot of our big members, a lot of members that have left the association, quite frankly, that that have you know wanted to be more focused on advocacy and other things like that in the future. And so to let them know, we heard you. It might have taken yeah. a little bit longer than, <laughs> than folks you know yeah. wanted, but but we heard you. So I am doing that. I'm talking to non-members. I'm talking to the members of Congress. So the good news is that that we have so much opportunity and that morale is high and, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's my job to keep it there and to continue to hear all of that and to hear feedback on, again, where we can be going in the future, because mm -hmm. I think the world is our oyster on this. We need to be focused. Of course, you can't, you know, we, we got to start rifle shotting, you know, not a scatter mm -hmm. shot in, you know, right. in the beginning, but right now uh, that's what I'm trying to do is, is one track at a time, hear everyone's concerns and, and take it all in and yeah. process it in Dallas at our, at our trade show, which is going to be yes, fantastic. It is. And I'm going to be there and I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's a great event for those of you that have not been to Ursha or were on the fence, you need to go. It's a fantastic event. And it's going to be amazing to get back together in person this year. So, um, I love the rifle shot reference. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, with that being said, you know, I'm going to uh, not pretend that I know a lot about speaking to people in Congress and that whole arena. That is very foreign to me because that's not the I mean, I don't live in that arena. How does that work? How, how do you build relationships with people in Congress? How do you get your foot in the door? I mean, maybe I don't want to know, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, tell, tell no, us a little bit about how that works. I'm just curious. Listen, it's not as intimidating as it might sound. So okay. one of the things we talked about last week with the committee when we were in town is that I want us to have a fly-in where I want members from all over this country to fly in to Washington, D.C. and to talk to your lawmakers. Now, when you're talking to your lawmakers, what you're doing is telling your story. 
And all of you can do that in your sleep. So you do not need to be a policy expert, a legislation expert, a process expert. You need to be an expert on what it is that you do. So to talk about how long have you been in business? What kind of employer are you? How many employees do you have? What are the challenges that you have? And that's the message that these folks need to have. And then you rely on folks like me and other lobbyists in town to, to handle all of the, the other stuff. So that can be done in so many ways. That can be done right now by picking up the phone and calling your legislator and saying, I don't know all the ins and outs of this legislation, but we need relief. And here's, here's what I do. And here's all, how long I've been in business. It's as easy as that. And then it's really? about going, okay. yes, going to their, their offices in district. You don't have to come to Washington, DC. Every policymaker has a, a, an office in their home district and you could set up a meeting mm -hmm. there and talk to, talk to the staff there. And it's really just telling your story and telling, like we talked about that dire need. So so many industries have organized so well, and it's why the restaurants, frankly, were given relief because they were organized before this time hit, and now they've been able to continue to leverage their restaurant base throughout the country. Now, mm -hmm. our, our, our base is doing great, but we need to be doing more, and now's the time. So what I would say is don't be intimidated. It's about telling your story and just saying we need relief, and it's not up to you to know any of that other mess, and then it's, a, it's like any relationship, you know, you, you, you date, you got to start court, you got to introduce yourself, you know, you got to start dating. And then, you know, finally you get on one knee and make the ask, you know, but right. you don't get on one knee and make the ask on your first date. Right. So that it's, it's about relationships and, and there's a lot that goes into that, but that is, that is the job of our members. There mm -hmm. are other things to that, that are you know going to be the job organizationally of URSA that things like our PAC, which is political giving. And, you know, that's something that we talked a lot about last week and that that'll be a focus in the future as well. And then as well as just straight up shoe leather lobbying for those of us in Washington, D.C. It's why I'm in Washington, D.C. That's why I'm staying in Washington, D.C. Is that where you're at now? I am. Okay. And, and it's why it, the future is going to be future URSA employees here. And, you know, we're going to build out over time to have a presence here. I don't know exactly what that means quite yet, but mm -hmm. right now I'm employee number one and, and we're going to build from there. Yeah, that's great. I love it. So you're uh, you're awesome. First 30 days and you're like, DC, here we come. <laughs> Let's go. Pedal to the metal. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I've been in the fitness industry for about 23, 24 years. And, and it's always been one of those industries where everybody holds everything very close to the vest. It's been very segmented for a very long time. It's always kind of like, for lack of a better word, there hasn't been a lot of unity in past, past years and past experience. And now we're talking about unity. And I will say this, the pandemic really crushed and brought down a lot of those walls that were up because people were starting to open up and talk to each other. Um, a lot of, you know, JV partnerships were formed. A lot of people were really leaning on each other. How does Ursha play a role in bringing the industry together and creating that unity? Because I believe the bigger that the industry is as a unified body will have a bigger impact um, in the world. So, yes, listen, it, you're right. It's about the good of the future of this industry and that URSA mm -hmm. it will be the unifier. I think I'm doing it already in my first 30 days. I understand folks are competitors out there, but what has been really interesting as I'm learning is how regional some of these businesses are. So yes. in some instances, it might be much easier for a club chain in Chicago to get along with a club chain in Baltimore versus yes. the, the three competitors in Baltimore that are all within you know, a five minute radius of each other. I get that. Right. And, uh, but there is a home for everybody. And that is part of why we need to unify together. We're not going to be aligned on everything. Mm. We are not going to have the same asks and initiatives as everything. The big companies are not necessarily going to want the same thing as the small studios, but there is a lane for everyone and we can be the voice for everyone. And so yes. as long as the others are not inhibitors, to the effort. And mm -hmm. as long as it, it won't be a direct competitive issue, you know, we would never pick an issue to go advocate on that's going to hurt a sector. It might not help another sector as much as we would, but as long as that folk, you know, that that, that, that lane is going right. to be able to support the greater good, that's really mm -hmm. important. And we did that at the confectioners. So of course, candy companies are fierce competitors. And, yes. <laughs> but we were able to put the brands aside at mm -hmm. every board meeting and stop and say, this is for the greater good. Put the brands aside, come to Washington. 
this is for the greater good. So my hope is that that continues. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had great conversations so far out of the gate and we can recognize that we're not all the same. There are different segments, but everybody brings a different asset to that with each one of everything that they're bringing. Yeah. Rising tide lifts all boats, right? Yes. So <clears throat> it's, it's, you do, you've got to help each other out. It'll come back. So yep. Yep. Um, speaking of segments, you know, I can think of like maybe three, what, what segments are we talking about amongst the fitness industry? So I'm thinking like, you've got your big athletic clubs, you've got your health club chains, you've got your studios. Am I missing anything? There's yep. the vendors, technology, um, things like that. Am, am I, is that right? Okay. Yep. Yep. And that's okay. that, exactly that. And of course, like what a vendor wants is much different than what a small studio wants, which is much different than what the technology company wants. And, um, you know, at our core, we represent right now, as we stand the, you know, individual or, and chain, you know, but we mm -hmm. brick and mortar folks, but there is a home for much bigger, broader partnerships amongst that, whether yeah. you're an Ursa member or not, just to mm -hmm. be a partner for the greater good. Right. Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, let's turn, let's turn the table here and I'm going to have you create an ask for the people that are watching. What do we need to be doing right now? What are next steps? How can, how can we plug in? How can we help? And what, maybe what are we not seeing that we should be doing? Listen, if you're not familiar with Ursa, we want to know who, just as, as you want to know who I am, I want to know who you are. So mm -hmm. my ask would be to reach out to us and to, to get on my calendar, to get meetings on the books in Dallas. I am, you know, I'm, I'll work 24 hours a day if I have to in Dallas to get to meet everybody. <laughs> so, uh, so first to, to come to Dallas, if you're not doing that, but then to mm -hmm. also try to figure out a way that we can, we can connect there. The other thing I would say is we are in a critical time right now on the advocacy piece. So if there is an opportunity to reach out to your member of Congress, and we have a link I can share with you, uh, Nick, mm -hmm. past this, which is actually- Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. That'd be great. And it's a direct yeah. link that goes directly to your member of Congress with a pre-written letter saying we need relief. And we the more of those we can get, the more that we will differentiate ourselves from these other industries that are also asking for relief. And then yeah. beyond that, my ask is for hope and optimism. So I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of that going around and we can do it if we have the attitude that it can be done. So that is a, a plaque that I have from yeah. famous Ronald Reagan said that, and uh, mm -hmm. it can be done. And I do believe that. And there is so much strength, so much creativity and so much opportunity in this sector that I'm jazzed and I hope that that you're jazzed too about what I, the future can be. I am. I'm extremely pumped. And it's it's so funny. I, mo almost every uh, guest I have on the show is very optimistic about the future of the fitness industry. And I'm very bullish on it. And uh, after talking to you today, I'm jazzed. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very bullish on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped. So uh, I, I can't thank you enough, Liz, for just everything that you are doing. I know you're tired and working hard, but for some reason you have the energy of five people. And I would love to know your supplement regimen because I could use some of that. So uh, last question before maybe we we'll market it. Yeah. Maybe that'll be yeah. some sort of Ursa, yeah, revenue scenario. Yeah. Okay. Take the Liz concoction here <laughs> and have right. energy for days, yeah. <laughs> be able to work 24 hours a day. Um, what are you most looking forward to at Ursa at the, at the convention coming up? I am so excited to just see the floor, uh, meet the members in person. You know, everyone is so zoomed out and I've been doing a million zooms and it was what was so refreshing about the NHS last week is that we got to actually be in person. Yep. So to be in person, to see the show, to see everyone that is coming together, to hear the education sessions, to do the networking, I am ready. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. You know, what's so funny about Zoom is like, it's nice because it's better than just audio. But when you see people in person for the first time, even if you've been on Zoom with them a lot of time, it's always a little bit different than you anticipated. You know, 3D is very different. <laughs> right. I know. And I'll tell you a little secret, because one thing you don't know about Zoom is how tall somebody is. And right. so uh, one thing that I just warned everybody, I'm really short. I'm five one, And so a lot of folks, oh, that's okay. you know, have it, so I wear high heels quite a bit. I don't know how, you know, how long I'll be able to wear the heels on the show floor, but I'll give it, I'll give it my best. I've worn heels all through yeah. Congress for the last 20 years. So I, I think I can get through a show, show floor. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe I'll be I, five, four. 
When yeah, you I'm something. five one two. You would never know it, but that's right. <laughs> I'm yeah. just but our I'm... personalities are you know, <laughs> no, 12 I'm... feet. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm about six foot one, but yeah, I can't wait to see you at Ursha. I, I'm looking forward to connecting with everybody too. So thank you again for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Keep up the great work. And if you're listening now and uh, you're looking, uh, hop over to the website, click on the, the show note links, and you're going to go right to Ursha's website. And then you're going to be able to uh, fill out anything you need to, to connect with Liz or Ursha's team. Um, or, you know, for advocacy reasons. So please do that. So, all right. Remember, the more you know, the more you grow. So like, share, and subscribe to the next level of your success in your fitness business. And until next time, we'll see you soon.